Hey, Lamar! I see that you're still going strong and uh, hopefully raisin free, but based on your daily booth photos, raisins are always in your life. Dear God, no. Anyways, uh, I hope that uh, you are doing well in your teaching environment. And unfortunately, it's very unfortunate that they filmed this teacher doing that particular action, but uh, it does prove a point. Now, bear in mind that I'm 35 years old. I've uh, been taught by my dad, uh, not homeschooled, but my dad was a teacher for the longest period of time since the age of 18, retired just about five, seven years ago, give or take, uh, maybe 10. I was just recently married when he retired. Um, and my mother went from being a secretary to changing her career drive to become a teacher. And she wanted to become a principal at one point or another, but she gave up on the system, uh, mostly because she studied and studied and studied. She so came out with a master's, went for a PhD, all in education, um, with the Willem Glasser Institute and a whole bunch of other nifty little bits of details that you can use to advance and forward the person's knowledge of themselves and arm them for what they need for today. The unfortunate downside is that when it comes to schools, schools and school districts have a big part to play uh, in everything, but so do parents and so do students. Um, the teachers also, the more creative a teacher is, the faster they might become uh, to a point of burnout because you tend to put all, your all into wanting to give to the children or adolescents or young adults that you're teaching all the knowledge that they can get and you want to do it in an entertaining fashion so that they retain more of that knowledge and also get uh, get some uh, some fun out of it because studying always boring equals loss of, uh, of interest sometimes especially for those that have uh, a more hands-on approach, those that have certain auditory issues, visual issues, there's so many things that happen in, in uh, today's society when it comes to learning uh, curves, literally. Um, one should not become frustrated about one's own issues. Uh, the only problem is, is that you have to be patient with yourself if you're having issues trying to learn in class, explore with someone who is willing to explore with you as to what you may have. Now, it could be something that you need to wear certain polarized glasses, certain colored lenses to avoid the words moving around, disappearing. There's so many things that exist nowadays that they've discovered that it's not simplistically anymore. You're over you're over uh, acting, you're hyperactive, your uh, attention deficit. Uh, here, take your pills, settle down. Yeah, no, that a pill will never solve anything. And in most cases, it, it actually causes more inconveniences than it causes convenience. As for the teacher snapping, uh, I miss when I was growing up in in primary school, uh, grades one through nine. I miss having the teacher literally controlling the class the simple fact that teacher was God during that time. We were outside of our homes, we were stuck in a room with other people, and we needed to concentrate on what the person was saying. I've seen teachers slap children, um, and we didn't care what they did to the other children. We learned from that lesson that if we piss off the teacher and we laugh at the teacher and we make jokes at the teacher and the teacher's trying to do their job and they're just not getting that particular mutual respect, um, that it was okay for the teacher to actually raise a hand and slap the child. There was no belt, there was no strap, there was no nothing. You were either physically manhandled or you were taken firmly by the shoulders and brought out to the principal's office. Or you were... Um, not beaten, but for those that really, really, really commanded that type of attention, uh, it only took one event with one teacher for a full year of peace and quiet from that student. 
Mind you, a lot of them have turned out to be crooks, schnooks, and thieves, and drug addicts, and unfortunately that wasn't because of the teacher actually raising their hands, it was because of the parentage and the whole bunch of nastiness in the environment that tended to actually just compound the problem into something that was impossible to deal with in, in the class. But um, a, a burnout or a mental breakdown is very difficult to come out of. That teacher will probably never come back in the classroom again. Not because of what he, he actually showed, because if he can rehabilitate himself, he can come back. Because uh, his shrink or whatever the, the actual prescribed treatments that he's going to go through or are going to do to him are going to hopefully re-establish re his mental karma and balance and bring him back on ground. But unfortunately, I've learned from experience by seeing certain teachers never come back from mental breakdowns. They're always one inch away from going back into one, and usually not into a lunatic frenzy, but uh, something else displays where they suddenly snap and they you see that they're no longer themselves. Literally, they're no longer themselves. I have one teacher who was my phys ed teacher for the longest period of time. He made a racist comment against a boy. It went not to court, but it went to the board. It went to the, the, the parent board and the school board. And everyone was uh, forcing him to apologize. His pride did not let him to apologize with an empty conscience. He apologized forcefully, he ended up breaking down mentally, and he has never come back teaching. And he had like maybe 10-15 years to actually complete to go into full retirement. But as it stands, the poor guy is completely detached from society. Um, he's I haven't seen him since that particular mental breakdown, so I really don't know what's happened to him, short of... The point of the matter, kids, is that before I run out of time, I'm rambling. What Lamar is saying is true. Um, when you're going into a classroom, you're there to learn. You're not there to be a clown. You're not there to have fun. You're not there to do anything else except try to participate with the class productively, not destructively or being a bother. But one thing that I want to emphasize is that it's almost a form of bullying. You have to take that into consideration. You're there to try to learn. For those that are interested, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to sit down quietly in the room and learn from the teacher and learn from the textbooks while participating in the activities. And it would be remiss of any classroom not to speak up to actually advise the kids that are causing a disruption that they're causing a very big disruption and disrupting other people that are currently wanting to actually listen to the teacher. It's also on behalf of the teacher to actually talk sense with the kids and the young adults and the adolescents. The reason why is because there's no difference between an adult and a kid. You don't need to ask further details in regards to it. You can do any searches on the web that you want. We have many adults that act childishly so many ways, so many days, so many times in a month, a week, a year. Even our presidents, our prime ministers, our, our politicians, even the most edu highly educated people will have the inner child that will never grow up, that will always be present. In fact, I'm a firm mind and believer that an adult is just a bigger form of child. There's no bigger difference. It's just that what we have compared to the child is life experience, what we've gone through, what we've lived through, and we try to avoid going through those same mistakes. Unfortunately, that doesn't always work for many people. And you can't really impress upon others what you've gone through because they still need to learn for themselves. Unfortunately, Lamar, for this teacher, teaching and learning are now on two separate wavelengths. All the best. Have a nice one.